Adilur Rahman and Nasiruddin Ilan of the Human Rights Organization, Odhikar, were punished by court for spreading planned rumors and false information, drawing attention both domestically and internationally. Some members of the so-called civil society claim that they have been unjustly punished. However, none of the civil society members talked about the false information and rumors they spread during the Hifajat e Islam's sit-in program at Shapla Chattor in capital on May 5, 2013. They used human rights organization Odhikar as a platform to disseminate rumors. However, to understand Adilur's involvement with Odhikar and whether he was its real founder requires a deeper exploration into the organization's history. To uncover the answers to these questions, one must delve into its origins. Odhikar was established three decades ago in October 1994 during the BNP government's tenure. Odhikar was founded by Masood Hassan Siddiqui, a visionary man who graduated from the Department of Mass Communication and Journalism at Dhaka University. Khairuz Jaman Kamal and several others joined him on this journey. At that time, Adilur Rahman also became a part of Odhikar, along with many others. While Masood Hassan was one of its directors and member secretaries, Odhikar has been an advocate for human rights issues since its inception and attracted the attention of local and foreign donors. Masood Hassan was invited to an event abroad. The Adilu group started lobbying to prevent him from participating in it. However, when they could not stop him from going abroad, the Adilu group became more desperate. Eventually, when Masood Hassan went abroad, Adilur Rahman and his associates forcibly took over the authority, ousting the then administrative officer Shudhangshu Shekhar Roy at gunpoint. I received an invitation from USAIA, organized by Freedom House and I went there. I stayed there for one month. Shudhangshu texted me that Odhikar had been taken over and we had been expelled from the office. Your office had been ransacked and locked. When I asked who was responsible, Shudhangshu named three individuals with Adilur Rahman Khan and Abdul Hasib Khan leading the group. Besides, Adilur misappropriated donation funds and terminated numerous employees without pay to maintain control. Masood Hassan considered taking legal action, but Adilur had strong connections, including with the Deputy Attorney General at that time. Adilur was also close to several influential individuals within the BNP government. As a result, Masood Hassan found himself compelled to depart from his own institution with a sense of powerlessness. Most of the board members of Odhikar were associated with the legal profession. They advised me that no matter how hard you try, pursuing a legal case would likely be futile. Masood Hassan wants Odhikar to be returned to its original founder. Adilur Rahman is not the founder of Odhikar. He took control and answered Odhikar and I want Odhikar to return to its original purpose as envisioned by its true creator. Now, let's turn to a different topic. Private television channel TV set sail in Bangladesh in 2000 with high hopes and dreams as the country's only private broadcaster with terrestrial facilities. It quickly gained popularity due to its diverse programming including news, culture and entertainment. However, when the BNP Jamaat Alliance came to power after the 2001 election, issues arose regarding the channel. The channel's managing director, UK national Simon Tring, had his work permit revoked, leading to a halt in broadcasts. The Ekusha Television authorities then initiated a legal battle to resume broadcasting, employing the country's best lawyers. The government, on the other hand, had its legal team, including Deputy Attorney General Adilur Rahman Khan and Attorney General A.F. Hassan Arif. According to observers, some individuals who advocate for independent media appeared to act against it in this case. 
seemingly supporting the shutdown of the media. This raised questions about the consistency of their commitment to freedom of speech. Likewise, when human rights organization like Odhikar was forcibly taken over by individuals wielding arms, there was silence from those who claimed to champion human rights. Will they help realize the dreams of Masood Hassan Siddiqui and his colleagues for the organization of labor and talent that Odhikar once was? Shreya,